Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today you're going to learn how to prove that quadrilaterals are parallelograms. So uh, before this, we've learned all the different things that are true about parallelograms. So when we know it's a parallelogram, we know lots of things are true. Opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, diagonals bisect each other. Those were kind of the big ones. Uh, but now we're going to learn what do you need in order to prove that something's a parallelogram if you don't have all that information, if you weren't given that it was a parallelogram. So let's look at some, some, some choices we have. So one is the obvious, which is using the definition of a parallelogram, right? The definition of a parallelogram. So if you can show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then you've got a parallelogram. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but then we can also use some of the properties. So it turns out that if you can show that the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, so if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, it has to be a parallelogram. It turns out that that's true. So if you can't show they're parallel, but you can show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, that's again enough to know that it's a parallelogram and you could use that in a proof. Another one, and this comes right from one of our properties, if you can prove that the opposite angles are congruent, then you know it's a parallelogram. Again, anytime you have both pairs of opposite angles congruent in a four-sided figure, then it must be a parallelogram. Okay, and then the next one, again, comes right from our properties, is if the diagonals bisect each other. So if the diagonals bisect each other, so if you can show that somehow, uh, then it must be a parallelogram. Now, the, the fifth way that we can prove triangles, there are five, kind of like when we were proving triangles congruent, the fifth way to prove something's a parallelogram is a new theorem. This one's a little different, so you definitely want to write this whole thing down. It says if one pair of opposite sides, so if one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel, then that quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. So let's just see what that might look like. So if you have a quadrilateral and you can show, let's say that these two sides are parallel and congruent, but the same two sides are both parallel and congruent, that's enough to prove that it's a parallelogram. Uh, the rest of it will have to follow. I want to be really clear. It has to be the same pair that's both congruent and parallel. If you have these two parallel, but these two congruent, that's not enough. That's not enough to show. And in fact, what that could look like, I'm kind of running out of space here. Here, I'll uh, move that over uh, and show you what that could look like, just so you can see why this one over here on the left doesn't work, is you could have something like that, where those two are parallel and those are congruent, but clearly that's not a parallelogram, so that wouldn't work, which is why that doesn't work. But in this situation over here, it does. Okay, let's, uh, let's see now how, what this would look like in a proof. Okay, so you should pause now and copy this down, and you might even want to try the proof yourself. See if you can come up with a plan uh, for how you might prove that this quadrilateral, ABCD, is a parallelogram, and then compare it with how I do it. Okay, I'm going to show you, there's actually a few different ways you could go about proving this. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to walk through the whole thing, but I'm just going to give you some plans for how you could do it. And then, and then maybe you're going to go through and try to write them out uh, formal proofs, as formal proofs. Okay, so we're given that angle A is congruent to angle C. So I'm going to be a, a good boy and mark that up on my figure. Then I'm also given that AB is parallel to DC. So I'm going to mark that up in my figure too. Good practice there. And I'm going to state it, which I've already done here, and my reason is that it was given. Now, I'm going to walk you through a couple different ways you could go about proving this. So one thing I notice is that I've got two parallel lines. Remember how important those theorems about parallel lines were? They just keep coming back. Really, really important stuff. Cut by this transversal gives me these alternate interior angles. I don't have the other alternate interior angles because I don't yet know that AD and BC are, are parallel, but it does give me these two. 
so if I call this angle 1 and this angle 2, just because I'm being lazy, I could say that angle 1 was congruent to angle 2, and that's by alternate interior angles. If two lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. I could then get BD congruent to itself. BD, I said I wasn't going to write it out, but now I am kind of writing it out, sketching it out anyway. BD congruent to itself by reflexive. And now I've got the two triangles congruent, so I could say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle, let's make sure I do this in the right order, it's going to be CDB, and that's angle, angle, side. I've got two angles in a side. And then I could use CPCTC to get, for example, one way I could do it is I could use CPCTC to get that AB and CD are congruent. So if I did that, I could say AB is congruent to CD by CPCTC. And then I could prove that, and the way you can write this is just say parallelogram ABCD, or, or I could say, as I wrote here, ABCD is a parallelogram. And my reason would be if one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel, then it must be a parallelogram. So that's one way you could do this proof. I'm going to show you one more way, and then if you have questions, we can talk about any other options in class. So once you prove the triangle is congruent, uh, you could also prove, uh, for example, that the third angle was congruent. So I could get angle ADB congruent to angle CBD, and once I had that, and that once I had those by, by CPCTC, then you could use those alternate interior angles to prove that AD and BC were parallel. So I could get those two angles congruent by CPCTC, and then AD parallel to BC um, by alternate interior angles. And then you'd have both pairs of opposite sides parallel, which is the definition of a parallelogram. So lots of different ways you could do this proof. We'll talk more about that in class. Have a good night. You want to say good night, Sophie? Say good night. Good night.